Hey everyone, Chappie Gaming here and welcome back to another episode of our SWE World Cup. This one is the second of our two matches in Group B. This is England versus Australia. Now of course, due to the result we had in India versus Japan, this group is all up in the air and England look to try and take advantage here this evening. And here is our opening match of the evening. It is me, Marty Skull taking on Shane Thorne. Now this one on paper, I just, for some reason I expect England to get a 5-0 win here. Obviously being English myself, I'm sort of hoping for a strong performance from them. I want to see them make it through and they've got a fantastic opportunity not to just make it through, but to actually finish top of the group here as well. With Japan losing their first two matches, I still think Japan will go through because they do have that match against Australia yet to come and again on paper Australia not the strongest team. So I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like they might be able to pull it off, uh, Japan, even though they've had the poor performances so far. But England here have a great chance. If they get the five points here this evening, well, they're on now. They're on three at the moment. They get the five, they go up to eight. Um, which would put them top of the group with India on seven, uh, Japan on four. So that would put me and England would need one point against Japan. So that's the thing right then. If this does finish 5-0, if England versus India finishes like 3-2 in the in the last set of matches, no matter what Japan do, India and England will go through. So Japan doesn't just need a, a, an amazing win. They also need a, uh, a one-sided match between India and England as well, which is pretty interesting. But this should be an interesting one. Like I said, it's um, a lot of this is pretty one-sided on paper. I mean, Marty Skull versus Shane Ford. Nothing uh, against Shane Ford. He's a very good wrestler, but he's uh, still a young up-and-comer. As is Nick Miller, who'll be facing off against Pete Dunne after this one. And we will have Buddy Murphy versus Zack Sabre Jr. Like I said, I, I do expect a 5-0 win here. But you never know. We could get surprised. We've had a few surprising matches recently with well, the US getting hammered by New Zealand was a big surprise, actually. That really has thrown uh, Group A up in the air as well with one more set of matches left for Group A. And, of course, after this one, it would uh, make things a lot interesting as well. With A lot interesting? A lot more interesting as well with, um, with the final two matches of Group B as well because it is going to go down to the final episodes of Group B, see who does go through. And, of course, remember... Tomorrow we're starting up with Group C again, our second round of matches for Group C. And that is a big one, actually. Samoa versus Germany is massive, that one. That could be the battle for second place. Then Mexico versus Puerto Rico as well. Of course, Germany beat Puerto Rico 4-1. And uh, Mexico, I'm pretty sure, will do something along the same sort of lines. Marty now taking... Taking um, Shane Fawn up on his shoulder. I just got confused whether it's Shane Fawn and Nick Miller. It is Shane Fawn, isn't it? Marty springs Shane Fawn off, but clashing together. And so far, Shane is getting some offense. Shane just stamping on the, the body of... Mike Scott and Shane doing well here. Maybe Shane was watching the Puerto Rico versus Germany match last week where Epico found a way of defeating Alexander Wolf by basically just getting him counted out. And that's maybe what um, they could look to do here, to be honest. It would make sense for Shane Fawn to try and sneak that victory. And Shane Fawn now does have Marty. No, Shane's going to go for it. No, Shane smashing the face of Marty off of the turnbuckle post. It uh, looks like Shane Fawn does not want to stoop to that. He wants to win this match legit. He wants to prove how good he is. And he can only do that by actually pinning Marty Skull in the middle of the ring. Now dropping boot first across the arm. Shane Fawn. Ooh, what a forearm that was. And once again, just sending Marty face first off the apron. It's an interesting one, this, because Shane is actually 
getting a lot more offense than I thought he was going to, you know. Straight into the announce table once again. And Shane Ford is dominating Marty score. But I feel Marty might just have enough just to get back in control at some point and just finish him off. It's it's just the resilience of Marty Scott. He's a lot more experienced than Shane Thorn. I was going to say Marty's worked across the world in Japan and all sorts, but Shane Thorn, of course, also has as well. Shane was um, part of Noah before joining as part of TM... TMK? TMK61? Or TM... Just TMK? I'm not sure. I can't remember what it was now. I know what it was. It's just been so long. You no, know when you start to remember people as their um, as their WWE name rather than what they were beforehand. God, my PlayStation's getting overheated. It's gone really loud now. As Marty, this fight's going to drop to the outside once again. Marty stalking Shane Ford and running with that running elbow. Marty or oh. I thought he was going to go stupidly high risk there, but decides against it. But Shane Fawn took advantage of Marty's change of mind and caught him out. Now Shane Fawn is going to go high risk. Is he going to get high reward? Um, technically, yes, in the grand scheme of things, but not necessarily as it should have been. He just hit a double axe handle from at the top rope to a guy who was laying down. That doesn't really work in my opinion, but hey-ho, there you go. Nice DDT there by Marty Skull. Marty now bringing a battle gun on the outside once again. Marty now looking to try and get a count-up victory maybe. Referee's up to a 7, I think he was there, but Shane Fawn slides back in the ring. And Shane Fawn is actually giving it a really good account of himself here. I, I honestly thought Marty might dominate this one, but Shane has, has had a, a large amount of offense, and it is working pretty well. Pin now 1, 2, only a 2 count. Shane Vaughan looking for the drop kick to the back, but Marty avoids it now. Marty taking Shane off. Oh, arm breaker. Nice drop in the weight on the arm again. Jaw breaker there by Shane Vaughan and a running clothesline flattened him. Nice kick in the back. Ford now taking Marty Skull up. Oh, into a brain buster. So if Shane Ford was to get a point here against Marty Skull, that would be massive for Team Australia. They got one point in the last episode, of course, Buddy Murphy defeating Jinder Mahal. My God. He's just hitting a Bushi bomb on him. He's just hitting a Bushi bomb on Marty Skull. One, two. Wow, Shane Ford. Wow, I was saying about how I was convinced it was going to be 5-0 to England here. Then Shane Fawn goes and gets a point for Australia and really throws England in the mix now. Of course, India only defeated Australia 4-1 anyway. But with Japan sniffing around, England, India and Japan are really fighting out for the second and first place. I did say I thought Shane Form was doing fantastic in this uh, in this match. I I really thought that Marty would come back and win it though. To be honest, I did not think that Shane was going to be able to hold on to that offense and get the victory. But that is a massive one for Australia. That puts him up onto two points. And there was the Ibushi bomb by Shane Form that finally finished. Marty Scott off, and what a win that is for Shane Fawn. I feel like TM61 have just earned themselves a place 
on one of our upcoming universe modes. I, I really, I liked them, but I was never really, uh, I never really rated them that highly at this point in time. I thought they were just more potential up and comers, but it looks like maybe they've got more now. But can Nick Miller emulate his tag team partner Shane Thorne and get a victory this time over Pete Dunn? That'd be another massive one if that would happen, but I dare say Pete Dunn is not going to be in the mood to let that happen here this evening. He's just seen one of his teammates lose. I dare say Pete Dunn is going to be on this. I think he will be, you know. Pete Dunn is... I'm a big fan of Pete Dunn. I, I really like this core, actually. I think this is a really good one. I'm half tempted. I, I don't know. We are going to do Carnage straight after the World Cup, I think. Um, I'm struggling because my Carnage roster at the moment is fairly big. I have some ideas of what I want to do and how it's going to work. and It is looking pretty good. I am really liking the look of what I have lined up for Carnage. But then I see somebody and I think, this is somebody I can really see you working. But I think we will definitely use Pete Dunne in something coming up. So I do have other plans, other things to do. We're going to do some more tournaments as well. I like the idea of now doing Universe Tournament, Universe Tournament, Universe Tournament. Um, so I think that's what we will do. So we'll hit up Carnage after this, then we'll hit up a tournament. And then maybe, uh, like I said, Mayhem or Throwdown after that. Uh, but yeah, I like this Pete Dunn. I think he's pretty cool. It's our uh, entrance and everything's perfect for him. That's really good. And here he is then, Nick Miller, the other part of TM61. Shane Fawn got a big victory. So far, we saw Buddy Murphy get a victory over Jinder Mahal. Shane Fawn has got a victory over Marty Skull. So Nick Miller is the only one yet to get a point for his team. And I'm not sure I'm going to see that point coming in the match against uh, Japan. But I said the same thing here about England, didn't I, really? England's actually quite a highly rated team on this game. I've not changed any of the ratings myself. I've kept them as I downloaded them. Um, so I think all the English guys are mid to high 80s. Whereas all of the... Uh, the well, Shane Ford, Nick Miller, I think, are 77. And I think Buddy Murphy's down as 81. So you would have expected a, a dominant win here for England. But so far, we're actually 1-0 to Australia. Australia? Try and have a shrimp on the barbie. In various other racially stereotypical things. My god, it's a spider. A big freaking spider. Yeah, my Australian accent's not what it used to be. It used to be pretty good here. Nice elbow drop there by Nick Miller. And he is taking early control over Pete Dunne. Will it be prolonged control? That's the question. Or will Pete Dunne be able to come back into this with a big overhand punch like that? Pete Dunn now taking control. Pulls Nick Miller away from the ropes. Not enough for a free count though, as it shouldn't be. It was quite a, a limited amount of attack, wasn't it really? Oh, Nick Miller just sending Pete Dunn face first into the mat. Nick Miller now with a neck break on Pete Dunn. Right hand in the gut there by Pete Dunn now. Dropping um, Nick Miller face first into the interesting move that I've often said that Pete Dunn reminds me of a. Uh, not necessarily reminds me of, but he's the sort of guy who I think um, has, has taken a lot of influences from Triple H, especially working with Triple H. Um, I think they get on pretty well by the looks of it. And uh, that knee to the face is very much a Triple H move. Pete Dunn bringing Nick Miller back up to his feet. Now up into an X-Plex. I, I do like that move. There's the pin by Pete Dunn. One, 
two. I need a two count. Oh, I forgot my Pete Dunn's finisher manoeuvre is called, you know. I know it's something, but I forgot what it's called. I know what it looks like. It looks very much like this. It is called the Brummy Destroyer. It's not. But it is a point for Pete Dunne and a point for England, making it 1-1 one, one on the night. Pete Dunne looking good here. Nick Miller not anywhere near him, is he really? Let's face it. He had a strong start, but he just couldn't keep on the prolonged aggression like Shane Fawn did. And eventually Pete Dunne was able to come back, take control and just drop poor old Nick Miller for the free count. There was the X-Plex. Which I thought was going to be close enough as it is. I like, I do like that move. It's quite easy to get wrong with that move, I think, isn't it? It's quite a dangerous manoeuvre. But there it was, the... Ah, oh, what is it bloody called? He better have be on this year's game, Pete Dunn. He better had be. He's working a lot more NXT now, so I dare say he will be. What is he called? I forgot what it's called. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Either way, Pete Dunn is victorious. That all is that matters here this evening. That is going to help them pull away slightly from Japan and India. I feel like they need the 4-1 win here, though, to uh, to really get the most advantage and hopefully guarantee themselves a place in the knockout stages of the World Cup of Wrestling 2018. And here is our third and final singles match of the evening. Zack Cyber Jr. Zack Cyber Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. takes on Buddy Murphy in a very important match for England. Like I said, they need to pull away from both India and, of course, Japan. I think they, they should confirm themselves a place. So if they get the four points here, we'll put them on seven, which would be three ahead of Japan. Which means they still would need three or what, three points to guarantee themselves a place in the next round um, against India, which should be an interesting match that one, and that depends on Japan getting a five 0 win against um, Australia, which we found is not necessarily guaranteed anymore because Australia have yet to lose five 0 They've actually been a uh, solid-ish, actually, to be honest with you. Obviously, taking into account the fact that um, they are weaker on paper, they've actually done pretty well, in my opinion. God, it's bloody hot in this room. Don't realise how much heat the uh, the PlayStation kicks off when using it full blast. I'm not even playing a game. That's the worst thing. Literally, the game's playing itself. And here then comes Buddy Murphy. Victory in his last outing against Jinder Mahal. In what was quite a surprise. And now here he is looking to try and back that up against somebody else. But I do feel like Zack Sabre Jr. might be one step too far for old Buddy Murphy to be honest. I think Zack is just uh, he's a, an incredible wrestler. One of the best in the world in my opinion. Work in New Japan now as well, which is fantastic. I've not watched any new... I keep doing this. I keep saying I'm going to watch New Japan this year. I watch Wrestle Kingdom. absolutely love it. Although this year I was a little bit... I, I, I enjoyed Wrestle Kingdom this year, but nowhere near as much as the, the previous couple of years. But I, I just I still wanted to watch a lot more of it, and I still just haven't. I'm going to get the New Japan Network. I've said it so many times, and you guys have encouraged me every time I've said it. I'm going to get the New Japan Network and try and start watching... Some of the classic matches. I've only ever seen Kenny versus um, Okada 1. I've not seen 2, 3 or 4 or 5, whatever number they're up to now. I think they've got another match coming up at Dominion pretty soon as well. Uh, if Twitter's to be believed. So I'll have to try and... Yeah, I'd have to try and watch some of these amazing... Because there's so many amazing shows that New Japan put on. So many amazing matches. And especially at the moment while I'm recording this, Best of the Super Juniors, I think, has just finished... So that's probably worth a watch. But there's been so much fantastic wrestling going on in Japan. 
And while WWE is still looking a bit iffy and still looking a bit plain, Japan just goes from strength to strength. And talking of strength to strength, Japan is in con Japan. Zack Sabre Jr. is in control of this one. Buddy Murphy now wrenching back at the leg of Zack, though. And if he can try and weaken some of those body parts, it might be a bit more difficult for Zack to, um, to lock in those submissions. Nice suplex there by Buddy Murphy. Another suplex by Buddy Murphy. And Buddy Murphy is now taking some control. This is a bit of a, uh, a an interesting situation here for Zach. Although it is pretty interesting. Well, you, you wouldn't expect a dominant victory, would you? No, no not as a dominant victory, but say Buddy Murphy is um, is a decent wrestler, as I said. Um, I say he's not necessarily at Zach's level, but at the same time, I don't expect Zach to hammer him. I think on Buddy Murphy's good day, he might be able to beat Zach, and there's no reason why this could end up with a victory to Buddy Murphy. But I still feel, I still believe in Zach. I believe in you, Zach. Do it for us, man. Come on, England. I think you'll do better in this World Cup than you will in the football one, anyway. Which has started now in the football World Cup. Okay, what episode are we on now? I'm 13. Okay, so as I'm speaking to you right now, I am currently... Well, not as I speak to you. I'm speaking to you in the past right now. Hello from the past. Wow, I'm in the future. Okay. Um, when I'm actually, when this video gets uploaded, I will be in Turkey. I'm on a holiday for a couple of weeks. I flew out yesterday, and yesterday was England's first World Cup group stage match, which was uh, pretty cool to get there on the night of that with my all-inclusive alcohol as well. That'd be fun. Um, due to time difference, kickoffs over there are 9 o'clock in the evening. So the games are 9 to 11, which is pretty interesting. I'll be watching every game of the World Cup. Um... Works out pretty well time-wise on the holiday as well because the time difference. It's a game before dinner. Go and have dinner. Watch a bit of the entertainment. Then a game for the evening. It's going to be fantastic. But hopefully England did okay last night. I'm not a massive fan of international football. Being I'm much more of a fan of club football. But the World Cup's on. I'll watch it. Try and do a bit of scouting, you know. As you do. Get some ideas for some foot manager videos we can do in the future. As Zach Sibidu now lines up Buddy Murphy. Ooh. Buddy saw it coming though, caught Zach with a knee and they got now Zach taking Buddy Murphy down and turns him over into a single-legged Boston Crab. But Buddy Murphy able to break free. Buddy with the clubbing blow against the back of Zach and then another one as well into a neck breaker. Buddy stalking Zach. Into a backbreaker. There's the pin. One. Only one count. Buddy Murphy goes to the drop kick to the back, but Zach rolls out of the way. Taking him up into a Northern Light suplex. Bridges for the pin, but too close to the ropes, and the pin is broken. Buddy Murphy's um, doing well here, actually. So if Australia was to get a second point in tonight's episode, that would really for a spanner in the works for England and Japan would be in a much better chance of getting promoted promoted getting through but there is Zach catching Buddy Murphy but he's just got the rope straight away come on Zach think about this think about where you are ring positioning pin there by Buddy Murphy Buddy Murphy now locks in the reverse chin lock on Zack, slowing the pace of the match down. It's a good idea just to get a bit of energy back and try and sap a little bit of energy out of Zack. Buddy Murphy now dropping Zack face first across that top turnbuckle. Buddy Murphy actually doing a lot more than here than I thought he was going to, you know. 
I'm surprised at what I'm seeing. Murphy slamming the arm of Zach into the mat, and I am really surprised. Buddy Murphy's dominating this. Murphy now taking Zach up on his shoulder, dropping him face first. Buddy Murphy stalking Zach. No way is Buddy Murphy going to pull this off. Surely not. Buddy Murphy with Zach up in his shoulders. There is the Death Valley drive with the arm locked. One, two. Oh my word. Ladies and gentlemen, Buddy Murphy has just defeated Zach Sabre Jr. I'm going to stop talking now because every time I say something's going to happen or will happen, I get it bloody wrong. It's 2-1 to Australia on the night. Japan and India are rubbing their hands together backstage. England's really not taking advantage of this match, which they really should be because this was the easy one for them, really. Their last match of the group will be against India, and now I think they're going to have to win it. And here is in the big six-man tag. Team England versus Team Australia. This one has tonight's result. Up for grabs. If England get the win here, they win the show 3-2, just as they did against Japan. If Australia win here, they win 4-1, which is massive for them as well. Huge for them. I was not expecting Australia to do that well in this competition, so a 4-1 win here. Plus the point they got against Japan the last episode. All of a sudden, they're in, they're in this one. I don't think they will get through, like, because obviously they've got a beat Japan in the next episode to really get through to the next round, but you never know. They win here this evening, because you've got to think as well, because this is in a universe mode I'm doing this, <coughs> it's not just down to stats anymore. Every time these guys win a match, they're gaining momentum. They are gaining momentum, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. It's interesting how it all works out and uh, that sort of stuff, but Buddy Murphy now, two wins in two episodes for Buddy Murphy. That is a pretty impressive uh, pretty impressive result that not a lot of people can boast to in this competition. So Team England are in the ring looking for some redemption. Only Pete Dunne to get the victory here this evening then. So who got the wins in the last match then? It was... So it was only Zack Sabre Jr. and the six-man tag they won in the game against India. Or, or should have Japan, should I say. And tonight it's only been Pete Dunne. So if they get the six-man tag win, which we'll be hoping they should be able to get run. We'll get run. We'll get done. Well, again, I'm just, I'm just uh, as an England fan, I'm just hoping they do well here. And just like any England fan, we've come to a major competition and they're failing. Just what normally happens. Everyone thinks they've got a fantastic team and they're going to do well, but they never play very well together. Typical, isn't it? But we are underway then. Team Australia versus Team England. And uh, is that a pin by oh, Buddy Murphy and Zach Simba Jr. rolling up pins back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's Pete Dunn rocking a... Um, a dragon suplex there on Shane Fawn. And I think England are in control at this point in time, yep. Or they were until Buddy Murphy, that running back over. Buddy Murphy, 81 rated on this game. And has defeated 88 rated Jinder Mahal and 89 rated Zack Sabre Jr. That is massive Buddy Murphy. And now he's gained a lot of momentum as well. I can imagine that Team Japan will be a... Uh, not as confident as they were. They'll be confident in the fact that they know England are not going to be so far away from them. But they'll also be um, uncomfortable knowing that uh, Australia really picked it out of the bag here. And dominating this match now as well. It's three on two for the moment as well. It was that split second. Then Mike Skull comes in the ring hitting. No, gets reversed into a normal like suplex.
Nice kick in the back there by Nick Miller. Shane Fawn takes Pete Dunn up on his shoulders. As Buddy Murphy now catching Zach Saber Jr. Wow. Team Australia, where are they pulling this out of? It's insane where they're pulling this out of. It really is. Nick Miller there with a... Oh, my God. A gorilla press on... Might have gotten all of the English guys out the ring. They've dropped out, but Pete Dunne now does slide back in. Nope. And slides back out. Now slides back in. And Pete Dunne and Shane Fawn are back in the ring together. Shane Fawn now with Pete Dunne. I'm just amazed how well Australia is doing. I really am. They're dominating. Dominating so much. But Pete Dunn now getting some offense back on Shane Fawn. Of course, Pete Dunn's the most important one at this point in time. Because inside the ring and no one else was. And as soon as I said that, everyone else is back in the ring. Buddy Murphy now taking... Oh, might have got up into that neck breaker. Pete Dunn. There's the X-Plex on Shane Fawn. And now Pete Dunn slowly coming around. Looking to check out Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy now is going after Marty Skull. Looking to hit him in that same move. He defeated Zack Sabre Jr. with yet up on his shoulders. There's the Death Valley driver. And it is a rope break straight away. But that could have been a great chance there for Buddy Murphy to knock it out of the park once again with that win. Pete doesn't go for the pin now on Shane Fawn. Buddy Murphy breaks it up. Buddy Murphy now. Oh my god, he just hit that captured German. One of my favourite moves in wrestling. The electric chair captured German. I love it. I love that move so much. Nice boot in the back there by Pete Dunn. As Shane Form reversing Zack Sabre Jr. Not many people know how to reverse Zack Sabre Jr. Might score back in the ring. Needs to try and uh, take control once again. The numbers not really working too well. Oh, maybe no, they are now. Thanks to Shane Fawn going after Zack Sabre Jr. Arm breaker here by Mike Scott. All of a sudden, the numbers do work out pretty well for England. Inside the ring, Pete Dunn. He's going to roll out and try and take Nick Miller out straight into the ring steps. While wow, Phoenix splash the outside by Shane Fawn onto Zack Sabre Jr. But Marty Skull, middle of the ring. There's the crossface chicken wing locked in on Buddy Murphy. Nowhere near the ropes. Is he going to tap? Surely. He has to. He does tap. He does tap and Team England get the win. Mar I, was a bit, I was a bit confused there. It took a bit of a while to, for the referee to get that sorted. But he does tap and England do get the win. Three points to two. Oh, God, that was a close one. England don't have to like making it bloody complicated, don't they? They really do. Which means now England are on six. Australia are on three. India topped the group on seven. And Japan are on four. Okay. I'm just trying to figure it out so we know what the group stages are going to be, what the uh, what the table is going to be for the final of this episode. Well, I'll show you right now. Let's let's get the table up on the screen. So as you can see there, India still top the table on seven points. Now next episode they are taking on England, who are on six points, who are second in the group. Japan are in third place on four points. And then we've got Australia bringing up the rear on three points. It's Japan versus Australia in the last episode as well. Now, if there is a very close match between England and India. So if that finishes 3-2 between England and India. If it's 3-2 to India, it will finish 10 points to 8 points. Um, but that would mean that if Japan did beat Australia 5-0, they would qualify ahead of England. Now, if it finishes 3-2 to England over India, then England would be on 9, India would be on 9, and Japan would be on 4, which means that if they did get the full 5 points, they would be equal top. 
So they would have to fight, I believe, for the opportunity. Maybe we'll have to do like a little round robin. Maybe we'll do an episode of Triple Threats to see who goes through. I don't know. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it if it does happen. But Group B is absolutely wide open, as is Group A as well, going into the last set of matches. This is insane. I was not expecting it to be this close. I was not expecting matches like Australia versus England to finish 3-2. I thought it was going to be a 5 0 Straight off the bat, I did not expect us, um, New Zealand to beat the US 4-1, but that's what's happened. This World Cup is crazy, and it is so unpredictable, and I can't wait to see what happens next. When we start off in Group or we rejoin Group C for the second round of matches, like I said, our next episode will be Samoa versus Germany, and then Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Two massive matches that could define the final standings in Group C. So guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, please do hit a like and of course subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Shabby Gamer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.